The A-864 helicopter, known as the Apache, is an attack helicopter. The cockpit is arranged in tandem, with one seat in front of and slightly lower than the back. A ballistic shield separates the two pilots. The Apache carries rockets and missiles, and a 30 millimeter gun mounted under the nose between the two pilot seats. The AH-64 is equipped with two turbine engines mounted outside just behind the cockpit. Its two crew members consist of a co-pilot gunner in the front seat and a pilot in the rear seat. Normal access to the crew is through the cockpit doors, which open only on the right side of the aircraft. This is a two-lock operation. If the handle returns to the lock position too soon, the door will lock in the lower open setting. If the handle is moved to lock approximately 8 to 10 inches open, the door will then lock full open when pushed up. Both seats have a five-point single-release restraint system, similar to that used in race cars. Rotating the knob in either direction will simultaneously release all belts. The seat is equipped with an inertia reel. This helmet, unique to the Apache, features a snap-on eyepiece, which connects the helmet to the onboard computer systems. The Apache's two standard fuel tanks are mounted below and aft of the cockpit and contain 375 gallons of fuel. Now the emergency procedures for the AH-64. In the unlikely event that the aircraft is armed, the weapon systems in the canopy will pose significant danger to rescuers. They must be safed before anyone goes to the cockpit. Note that the rescuer avoided the front and back of the missiles and rockets by approaching directly from the side. Here in greater detail are the actions you should take. To prevent the Hellfire missiles from accidentally firing, turn this switch on the front of the launcher from arm to safe. Insert a weapon system jettison safety pin into the safety hole near the front of the pod, directly over the missiles. Although safety pins are stored in the aircraft fire extinguisher bay, rescuers should carry a set on their truck. A safety pin is also inserted into a safety hole over the rockets. There's no way to safe the rocket pod, so be sure to avoid it front and rear. When all pins are installed, the lead firefighter signals all clear for the rest of the rescuers. An alternate entry path should be part of the standing operating procedure and the event a weapon system cannot be saved. Both rear and front cockpits have canopy jettison handles located on the upper left side of the instrument panels. There is also one outside on top of the nose. All should be saved during the emergency shutdown. Pens are located convenient to each. If the word arm is visible, rotate each handle 90 degrees until the word safe can be read. Then, insert safety pin. Safety pins are stored beside the pilot's and gunner's right knees. Shut off fuel at both engines by pulling fire T-handles located on the upper left corner of the instrument panel in both rear and front cockpits. Engine shutdown controls are similar for both the front and back seats. Illustrated here is the front seat controls. Engine shutdown controls are on the left console. Grasp the engine power levers. Squeeze up on the locking triggers. And move the levers all the way to the rear. If the APU is running, shut it down by pulling the T-handle located in the rear compartment on the right side, consoled by the pilot's hip, just inside the bottom door frame. Pull the T-handle to stop the flow of fuel to the APU. Note that you must have electrical power for APU shutdown. The battery override switch is located on the left side, just above the control levers in the front seat. Move the switches to the rear to shut off electrical power. The final step of the shutdown is to disconnect the battery, which is located in a compartment on the right side of the aircraft, under the aft part of the engine. The battery has a quick disconnect. Turn the handle counterclockwise to remove. An external jettison handle is on top of the nose, directly in front of the gunner's windshield. Open the compartment. Rotate the handle 90 degrees, and then forcibly push the handle all the way in. 
If you're unable to gain normal access to the cockpits, the canopies can be jettisoned. Blowing the canopy must be a controlled procedure. Four sections of cockpit acrylic panels, front, rear, left, and right, will simultaneously explode outward. Acrylic glass fragments can be thrown more than 50 feet. All personnel must be warned and kept clear. If pilots are conscious, they must also be made aware. Two additional areas to avoid is the laser guidance system and the 30 millimeter gun, both of which are mounted in the nose of the aircraft. When activated, the laser rotates 180 degrees, exposing a flat glass window. Never get in front or look at it. Doing so can cause permanent blindness. This 30 millimeter gun can cause injury, even when it's not loaded with ammunition. During normal operations, the gun will rotate 100 degrees left or right, 11 degrees up and 60 degrees down. When hydraulic pressure is lost, the gun will automatically return to center and 11 degrees up. When the gun is activated, it will move with the pilot's head. Remember, when removing the pilot, leave the helmet on if possible. Disconnect the helmet and remove the eyepiece by pulling it straight out while holding the helmet steady. Next, pull the two connectors apart. Release the pilot's seat belt. Rotate the knob in either direction. Remove each belt and set aside. The cyclic stick in the front cockpit is collapsible. Depress the lever on the left side and the stick will fold down. Several areas of special interest are to the top rear of the aircraft. These areas may be accessed as demonstrated here. Get up on the catwalk located from the left side of the aircraft, behind the engine exhaust. The two upper cowlings are opened by removing two safety pins from the bottom rear, then opening latches on top of each cowling. Under this cowling is the APU and the rotor brake. Fires have occurred here because the brake failed to release while the engine was running. This concludes the AH-64 orientation. Points in review are the canopy jettison is power assisted. An activation of either cockpit handles or the external handle will explode the acrylic panels on both sides of the aircraft. Normal cockpit access is from the right side only. The flight controls normally cannot be moved without hydraulic pressure. Total fuel is 375 gallons. Personnel on board are two. Knowing how to handle all kinds of emergency situations for every type of aircraft takes many years of practice and training. While this continuous process takes place, crash rescue teams can review each of the scenarios presented in this series. Again, this video can in no way replace intense, hands-on training, but it is a good orientation.